Uh, just to wrap up this segment, Dr. Marshall, uh, Jody went through surgery, and we know that surgery is hugely traumatic on the patient physically and emotionally. And then for many patients who've had colorectal surgery, the next step is further treatment that can compromise your immune system, radiation and chemotherapy being the two obvious. What's the window after surgery before you consider uh, other treatments? I know that some patients are having chemotherapy to prevent recurrence as opposed to patients who may be having chemotherapy to deal with disease that still remains. What's the, what's the, the pickup for you once you get a patient back who's through the operation? Very quickly, stage ones uh, don't really get chemotherapy. Uh, stage two and three is where we talk about it and recommend it pretty much in every stage three and have long discussions in stage two. Um, and stage four patients generally need chemotherapy as a mainstay of their overall treatment. We like to get the stage two or three chemotherapy going within about a month. Um, so typically so we'll a month after, after surgery. surgery. Uh, that's generally when our surgeon colleagues tell us that things are healed well enough because our medicines do impair healing and can mess with wounds. Um, so we care about those wounds. We don't want them to break down. We don't want to have played any part in that. So very often patients will be eager to get started and we'll have to delay. Other times they're eager to delay and we want to get started. So we're always negotiating that, that start time. So ideally after a surgery, I would recommend that folks go see an oncologist at about three to four weeks after surgery. That's not a bad window. Not to start, but to begin the discussion for the chemotherapy. And we've talked also about the multidisciplinary team and that one of the most important and less used uh, pieces of equipment in medicine these days is the telephone. Mm. Um, it's so important, isn't it, Dr. Baezi, for surgeon and oncologist to communicate and give input and say, look, I think this patient's ready to go with chemo or, you know, maybe we're not quite there yet. Do you have any concerns for patients that you've operated on about the window of undergoing further treatment that may compromise wound healing or no? I think four weeks is probably appropriate. Uh, you know, I discuss pretty much every patient that I send for an oncologist. Usually there's a phone conversation of this is the patient I've just operated on. We have the final pathology. This is what we have. I think they will need chemotherapy or possibility of needing chemotherapy. Usually four weeks is the appropriate time that we ask for. If there's any concerns about the patient, they have not healed well, they're still, you know, in bed most of the time, they haven't, you know, regained their bowel function, we usually would like to wait a little bit longer. But again, it's always like you mentioned, there's a, it's not a meeting face-to-face, -face, it's a phone conversation between me, the oncologist, or the radiation oncologist. And a final comment, Dr. Marshall, we've heard so much about the advances that we are making in managing so many cancers, and the lifespan for patients is getting longer and longer. Uh, I know that you've talked on many occasions about colon cancer, that w there's a, almost like a paradigm shift that we're now thinking more and more about so many of these cancers as a chronic disease because patients are living longer, quality of life is better. When they do relapse down the road, we have newer treatments that are FDA approved and patients are responding, newer opportunities to treat with immunotherapy. Your thoughts on colon cancer, as a chronic disease. It's been great, actually, the transformation from the 25 years ago when I started this and was thought to be a young doctor um, to now. And so the majority of patients with colorectal cancer are cured, um, almost all of them by surgeons who, uh, through early detection, recognition, uh, removal of the tumor at a stage when it can be cured. Our chemotherapies have helped improve those numbers. Uh, but as you say, there's still a, too many people who have recurrence of their cancer, who have metastatic disease. And we have made significant success through a series of new medicines that have extended survival uh, two, three, four years in those patients. Um, those positive impact things, you know, new oral medicines, new treatments there, actually mean new burdens, new changes in a patient's life. So this concept of survivorship, I think that's sort of the buzzword we use a lot in cancer, is not just for that patient who's been treated and now done, we hope, with all treatment, but it's those patients who are surviving their treatment and continuing uh, to be out there in the world. So um, the, the, the we used to, just to give a mindset to the audiences, we used to be just so happy you didn't die 
that we didn't care what happened on the other side. Right. And now we have to recognize that so many more people are not dying that we've really got to recognize the negative impact of our life-saving treatments, um, whether that's on bowel function or neuropathy or fatigue, that impairs the quality of life going forward. So we must balance those two in an ongoing survivorship kind of way of thinking. Well, I think this segment has been phenomenal to bring out some really key issues to summarize. You know, we, we're hearing about how important the multidisciplinary team is with not just doctors, but all the other support network for both patient and caregiver. We're hearing about how key collaboration is between surgeon and oncologist and how important it is for the patient to have the right support, support network, the right set of ears at the right time for the right decision and that this is a, an ongoing journey. We're all evolving. And it was very interesting to hear how you went to Dr. Marshall. No chemo for me, thank you very much. But having the faith in your journey with the right team at home and in the hospital is so key. Jody, thank you so much for sharing your story. I wish you well on your journey. I wish Dr. Marshall great success and continue to have the faith Dr. Baezi, thank you for giving your surgical input in this Absolutely. discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you.